Konnichiwa my fellow codingers. While producing my previous video, I wanted to make the video a bit more interesting and show people that I am a manga holic. So I wanted to find out what hello is in Japanese. So I took the route that most people in the world would take and asked Google. I got the result, control C control V it and then save the text file. Got a pop up and hit okay and didn't care about the pop up. I continued on with my video production. During the process of editing, I wanted to use the Japanese words in my video. So I opened the text document and I was like, "What?" And then I remembered about that pop-up. I repeated everything and was cautiously waiting for that pop-up. And this time, I read it like a good boy. There was one word that rang bells in my head while I read it and it was the word unicode, which I had read previously in the Java textbook. And so I did some research and turns out that this is actually an important topic more so than I thought when I learned about CAR and Unicode. If you thought all that jargon that I spoke about till now was real, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but that is actually what I came up with to explain the stuff of this video with. Now let us understand what Unicode is and how it is used in Java. To understand Unicode, let's go back in time for a bit when people used typewriters. When a person typed in the letter A. How was a letter transmitted when computers only dealt with numbers? This is done using ASCII, which is the abbreviation for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Yes, which represented every letter as a number between 0 and 255 and stored it in 7 bits. The numbers from 32 to 127 represented all the English alphabets and some important characters. The numbers before 32 represented control codes, but the numbers above 127 till 255 were used by people either to add characters of a new language or to add some more special characters. As there was no standard to the numbers above 127, they represented different characters in different variations. These variations were called as code pages. If people who have the same code pages exchanged documents, no props. But what if two people who had different code pages exchanged documents? It was problematic. A message from China which meant "Hey" in Chinese could mean "Die" when it is read by a computer in the US. This could cause wars. So, just like the UN came Unicode. Unicode represented each character as a code point. Code point uses the format capital U+ plus, which is an identifier for Unicode and some hexadecimal number attached next to it. Unicode had the challenge to represent characters from many languages. The letter A is represented as capital U plus 0041 when written in Unicode. The 0041 hexadecimal when converted to decimal gives us the number 65, which is the same value that is given to the capital letter A as in ASCII. Unicode had inherited all the values of the English letter from ASCII and then represented letters from other languages. Now comes the problem of how to convert this unicode into binaries that the computer understands. This is where encoding plays its role. We will only see about UTF-16 encoding which stands for Unicode Transformation Format 16 bits as it is the one that is used in Java. Without going into too much details, the UTF-16 encoding stores all unicode whose decimal values are below 65535 as a single code point which lies in between these code points and uses two bytes to represent them in binary all unicode whose decimal values are less than 65535 are also called as basic multilingual plain characters which contains characters from many languages all supplementary characters are represented in between these two code points in unicode and are called as supplementary plain characters but as we can use only 2 bytes to represent unicode by using utf16 encoding all supplementary values are represented as two separate unicodes one from this set and the other from this set these two set of unicodes do not represent anything when they are used separately and are reserved just for this purpose now for the juicy part how do we use utf16 in java To use UTF-16, use the same syntax as normal Unicode, that is, capital U plus hexadecimal. Remove the capital U plus and instead use the escape sequence black slash U. An escape sequence is a special term that is given to the tag with a backslash and a letter attached to it. 
and then convert all the capital letters in the Unicode to small letters. Now let us see how this stuff that is the Unicode is used in Java code. Let us print the capital letter A using Unicode. The single quotes are used to enclose characters in Java. Now let us see how to use Unicode code points in the supplementary plane. Let us try storing it in a char. This will create errors because each Unicode has to be stored in 2 bytes and char can store a total of only 2 bytes. So we need to use the string which has more memory allocated to it and not a char. Now there is one important thing that is done by Java when using Unicode. Let us understand this via an example. This is the Unicode for tab. Now look at this code. This will produce errors when compiled. We know that there are two steps to execute a program. The first one being compilation which checks for the syntax and for errors. And the second one is running the program itself which is done by the JVM or the Java virtual machine. Now the problem here is that the Unicode is converted to the corresponding symbol by the compiler before checking. So the code becomes this. The compiler doesn't care about how much space is used in the code. But we have used the plus symbol to add nothing. So it displays an error. Now try this. The output is fine and is what we expected it to be. This is because we have made the Unicode into a cat. Now for the big question. Why Unicode? Unicode allows us to produce software solutions for all around the world. This wraps up the video. If you want to join the Codinges community to understand programming like no one else, consider subscribing to the channel. Anyways, thank you for watching.